Now, just like any other part of any other construction project, you really better start your landscaping with a pretty clear plan in mind. Our landscaping plan was put together way back before we poured the concrete driveway and sidewalks because the sidewalks are a key part of the landscaping design to begin with and because we wanted to make sure that we put sleeves, chases, underneath the sidewalks in every place where sprinkler pipes or control wires might need to run. Our landscaping plan is pretty basic. It's just a small lawn out front, which is gonna need sprinklers, and then quite a few shrubs and plants along the front and down the side of the house that are gonna need water also through a drip system. And then we went ahead and added a line for future plantings behind the back retaining wall. We were lucky to have a friend help us who really knows the ins and outs of putting a system like this together. Because I don't, and Nate is better, but it's just nice to have some help that's really qualified, right? Because getting the sizing of the pipes correct, the number of sprinkler heads per zone, the configuration of the sprinkler heads, and then installing everything in a manner that's gonna reduce future problems like maintenance and breakdowns, it's just easier said than done. And so like always, getting some professional advice can really pay off. The elephant in the living room right here, right now, is that the soil on our hillside is not great. It's got almost nothing but clay and shale in it. So we brought in about 30 yards of topsoil for the grass and the plants to grow into. Now even in our little town, there are quite a few choices of topsoil available for this type of thing. So this dirt, which comes from Douglas County Farmers Co-op, is really organic and really rich. It's, it's pretty much like a potting soil, really. It's nice material and nice material to work with. This dirt is from Umpqua Sand and Gravel and it's more of a traditional topsoil, which means nice clean dirt with no rocks and not much clay. You're gonna notice as the video rolls on that these two soil types get mixed and tilled together as the work progresses. Now I'm sure that the professionals are gonna have a lot to say about all of this, but if you watched any of my videos about my garden, you're gonna remember that I am not a soils expert and I take sort of a shoot first and ask a couple questions later approach when it comes to planting. My mom picked all our plants out and I'm here to pick them up, so let's go see if we can find them. Professional landscapers know a lot about getting a system like this to function smoothly. But so does the nursery where you buy the plants if you're going to the right nursery. Planting, gardening, yard work, and maintenance is part of every house, whether it's new construction or not. 
And these nurseries and greenhouses and garden centers are real subject matter experts. And they're also really good at explaining it to non-professionals like us. Now, not always, but often around here, a general contractor is not involved much in the landscaping on a house build like this. Now, our building department will sign off on a final inspection and the homeowner can move right in whether or not the yard is done. So lots of general contractors just pack up and roll out and leave that to the homeowner or the customer to take care of. On our house, though, the landscaping is a big part of the curb appeal of the project. And since we've been doing lots of work on this project anyway, we're taking care of the landscaping while we're at it. Now often, this part of the process will be subbed out just like any other subcontract. But having the right tools and equipment makes a job like this much more approachable. And fortunately, my dump trailer and my little tractor are just right for a job like this. And the only thing we had to rent was the trencher that you saw earlier. Landscaping is just about done. Ezekiel's got the irrigation in. He's got the he's got the uh, fertilizer tilled in with the topsoil, which is on top of the subsoil. The grade is nice. It's nicely crowned. The plants are in. It feels great. We've decided to go with the seed and let a little time, you know, three weeks or a month go by to get a nice lawn in here rather than sod. Sod would have been instant. It would have cost a thousand bucks, and we decided to save that money. The species that we like to use around here, they tell me, is Kentucky bluegrass. It deals with heat, it deals with cold, it looks good, it works good, it is good. And so with the watering in place and the fertilizer tilled into the topsoil, which was on top of the subsoil, built up, you know, maybe six inches of good dirt on top of the junk, this ought to be a very happy lawn if it can survive the deer. And so I'm a little anxious about that because the black-tailed deer around here love fresh, grass as it just comes out of the ground they're going to mow it and so it's going to become a race between the growth of the grass the summertime temperatures and the uh, greediness of the deer who after all are entitled to make a living also <laughs> do again wow is that fun <laughs> well it's been one week and the grass is about it's maybe an inch and a half tall already and thin, but I bet you in another couple weeks this will look thick and trim. And hope you enjoyed watching that come together. And do you like it? And Russie's trying out the, the sidewalks. Go, let's see you do it, bud. Let's go try them. actually pretty good biking. So when we first put the seed in the ground, we were delighted because it erupted out of the soil and it was growing up and it got about three quarters of an inch tall and it was so happy. And we were happy to see it. And then I don't know what it was. And I don't know if we got good pictures, 
but a dead spot showed up in the middle and began to grow towards the edges. And maybe that was coinciding with a big heat wave, and maybe it was fungus, and maybe it was overwatering. I don't know. But it started getting out of control, and so the last eight weeks have been spent on sort of a frantic, you know, May Day kind of a all hands on deck grass revival mission. It was too much water, huh? Yeah, that's what the guy said. Yeah. He told me that it's too much water. Dennis called the guy on the radio yesterday. Did he tell you that? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So I, I find this one. This is S4 that. Oh, yeah. Nice. Fungus control. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Brown patch. That's what we got. Yeah. And it looks like maybe we've done something, or maybe nature's done something. But it doesn't matter, does it? Because the grass is coming in. Green in the front yard is great. The deer are going to get tired of eating our deer-proof shrubs. And in just a few more weeks, this front yard is going to look like we hoped it would look two months ago. Thank you for watching Essential Craftsman, and keep up the good work. Now in the next episode in this series, we're going to go back inside the house to install the wood floors. It's a neat process, and we have some highly skilled craftsmen coming into the house to do it for us, thankfully, and I hope to see you there.